Hey guys, this is Chaos Beaver Tape, and today you join me for episode 38 of Solar Civilization, and we are on the launch pad with another one of my Grasshopper style uh, vehicles, or more kind of a Falcon 9 reusable style vehicle, although this one hopefully won't explode like uh, one of the Falcon 9 reusables, which is just um, like the test vehicle that, you know, does basically what this does. And this is actually just a slightly altered version of my Triton 1 main stage. Um, it now has seven engines and a little more fuel. Um, and I'm just doing a one engine landing test because I kind of want to make sure it's reusable. And it's a, just a nice way to test the spacecraft actually doing this kind of grasshopper style thing. Um, I'm not, I'm kind of debating whether to upgrade Triton 1 so that I have two vehicles. And I'm not actually fully liking this to be, because to make seven engines really worth it, I'd have to ha add a lot more fuel. But, well, the problem with this right now is, um, I don't have any real torque, and there's only one engine firing, so I have very little gimbal, so it's very hard to fly this around, even with Mechjeb doing the piloting. I imagine if it had been me, I would have uh, obviously, you know, done it perfectly, and everything would have gone per uh, wonderfully. But anyway, I screw everything up, and I narrowly, mi narrowly miss the launch pad, and, well, it doesn't do a Falcon 9R, it blows up on the ground, whereas the Falcon 9R blew up in midair. Not very televised, because SpaceX doesn't really televise its failures, because, well, why would you? Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, kind of before I started failing, um, is I'm not really sure about this, because to get full use out of seven engines, I need a lot more fuel. And that would make this a very tall rocket, and tall rockets are not so stable. Um, and I could uh, do various things to, you know, make that better, but I don't really need that, because, um, well, I have a heavy lift. I just, well, my original plan for this was... Something different to what I ideally do. But anyway, I hover it in the air for a while so I can um, show you what's actually going on under there. And you can see there's just a load of engines, basically as many as many as I could fit. But yeah, basically I originally just wanted to make something that was better than the Triton 2, because I didn't really like the Triton 2, it wasn't very good, but the Triton 1 was good but didn't have much launch capability. But instead, um, I, I mean government funding, decided to work on a different rocket. It will be derived from the Triton 1, and the Triton 1 that I have been flying most recently is the Triton 1.3, which is the reusable, ver the, well, the properly reusable version of Triton 1. So, I am working on developing the Triton 1.4, which is not just upgraded in terms of reusability, it is also upgraded in terms of um, lifting capability. Because what the um, Curl government, of course, not me, um, and what you're saying here is basically my first sort of test for the uh, reusability version of the Triton 1.4 upper stage, and the landing kind of bit has been done very differently from um, previous versions, which would just burn off. I'm using very far fewer parts and sturdier landing legs. But yeah, of course, um, this is all part of... Oh, you can see some space shuttle debris up there. That's awesome. Too much stuff goes on, I can't really keep to my point. But anyway, what, what I was saying was... Um, the Kerbal government, of course, not me, the Kerbal government, um, wanted a spacecraft that could replace my kind of um, team of vehicle, which I only flew once, really, and maybe flown again, the kind of the little vehicle I've got for servicing the station. It wants to replace that, but it also needs to be multi-purpose, so it also needs to be able to get to the moon, Minmus, and in emergencies, Duna. Um, and it has to be launched aboard a Triton 1. Now, the Triton 1 is only a 20-ton launch vehicle, so that does pose problems for a Duna-capable spacecraft. However, I did manage to make a fairly light Duna-capable spacecraft, not with much living space, but in emergencies, if really needed, if it was really needed, I could use it. And I don't think it would be a particularly capable... Well, it's it's got living space. I reckon it would be, you know, comfortable enough. Um, but yeah... So that is what you will see now, the first kind of flight test, kind of like the Orion flight test coming up, um, but probably not as cool. And the, oh, looks kind of different. This is Bandicam footage. Um, please do, oh, thank God. Uh, my my, my pre-render is on half, um, half quality. I thought it was just really terrible, but it's Bandicam. I know it's the pre-render. Anyway, this is my upgraded version of Triton 1, the Triton 1.4. It doesn't use seven engines. It uses, um, five engines, uh, as per, as all Tritons have. It's basically exactly the same, just with a little more fuel, and slightly better landing structures. And the vehicle on top, which is a little hidden by a wobbly fairing, is the, um, I forgot what I call it, I think, um, DK, 
DKM, um, Duna Kerbin, oh, DKM V, the Duna Kerbin Moon's vehicle. Anyway, um, that top stage does the standard thing. We get rid of the escape tower, and, uh, yeah, this is to launch into orbit now. But this vehicle has been designed so that it can have living space and a safe return system for three Kerbals. And if it's going to do it, it does need living space. It can't be just a capsule. I haven't included a huge amount of living space, but hopefully it will never have to go to Duna. But if it needs to, it can. It also has life support for three Kerbals for, I think, 220 days. So, yeah, this is pretty much just one launch. Well, this isn't going to Duna, but it, the idea is that it, it could be a one launch, easy spacecraft to Duna, refuel at Duna, return safely three Kerbals. That's what the Kerbal government needed, um, because as we go further out and start putting sol uh, a civilization in the solar system, um, we are going to need something that can do stuff like this, because that's just necessary. It's a bit of a lifeboat. It's it's a multi-purpose vehicle, but it's the ultimate multi-purpose vehicle. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully I'll make a better one that can go to, say, like, Jewel and stuff. But anyway, um, it's time to bring this first stage back, just kind of like my old Triton ones, um, just on three engines, main stage, re-entry. Um, yeah, this should just go fine. I've, it's even got more landing fuel than before. It weighs a little bit more, but yeah. Um, it does look very different from the Triton 1s of old. That is because I'm using KW fuel tanks, because I like how they look, and, I need, and I'm trying to keep parts down just because, well, game performance has been um, a big part of the government plan as well. And it looks like I'm kind of dropping a bit of quality here. I might, maybe it's Bandicam. I do apologize for that if it's particularly noticeable. I'll make sure that's fixed for next time. I reckon it's just multiple colors. Anyway, Translatron not working. It took ages to fire up, so it fired up way too late, and this smashed into the ocean, which is annoying. <clears throat> because when I click a button, I like it to work. So we will call that a software error um, that will be obviously worked on by the software engineers. Anyway, ditching that stage, this is the vehicle. It does not use nuclear engines. Nuclear engines are far too slow and far too bloody heavy. Although I bet if I used it, I'd save a lot more fuel. Um, but yeah, anyway, deploying those solar panels, making it look very pretty, um, kind of like the Orion layout, I guess. Anyway, this is headed for, um, for the, for the moon. It's going to do a little, little bit of flyby of the moon. And I did just quickly check that other stage, forgot to put any, um, probe, well, no, forgot to put any batteries on it, or any torque. So that will not be returning, which is a bit of a shame, because I'd like it to. Um, but in the future it will be returning. So this hasn't been a particularly effective uh, test of the reusable Triton 1.4, but we will keep working on that, of course. Um, I think this is a much better candidate for reusability than the Triton 2, and possibly even the Triton 1.3, which is my other reusable keep up. Um, anyway, we are flying by the moon, and because of my trajectory it's kind of screwed up, uh, so I need to change it slightly so I don't hit the moon. Um, well, no, because of my timing I screwed up the trajectory, that's what I meant to say. Anyway, I'm seeing if I can just bounce right to Minmus here, um, but it looks like it's going to be difficult because, well, it would be fine now, but of course our, our little friend floating point error kind of screws that up for me. Um, but it doesn't really matter. I have a lot of, I have almost two meter, two meters, two kilometers per second delta V on the spacecraft, but it will not get me to Minmus, although it probably could, but it would be very difficult, and I decide that it's not worth it because it was late. And I've been recording this for a while, so I kind of end up just deciding to go into a very high orbit so I can re test um, high-velocity re-entry testing, which I probably shouldn't have um, put Kerbals on board for, but it is, it is it's important. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to go into a very high orbit, um, as you can see, and then just come back as fast as possible. But that will take a while, so I'll have to kind of set out an alarm clock, um, because they are going to be in space for a while, and I have other things to do. And it looks rather wonderful as I fly close to the moon and everything is nice. Everything is awesome, everything is cool when you're part of a team. This three-man team will not be heading out to Duna, of course, but one day maybe this will. I would quite like this to go to Duna, it's a nice little ferry, it has... I'm glad that I got living space on it, basically, and I'm glad that I could launch it on a very small vehicle. Because the space launch system type vehicle is, you know, earmarked for other things, like uh, constructing large orbital vehicles or throwing bases onto places very quickly. Not for the, you know, small little things. Anyway, um, this is a lab I launched in episode 13, or maybe episode 12 of Solar Civilization. And I want this lab back. I want it at my moon base, because I don't have a lab, and I, can't, I don't really have time to launch one right now, because I have a very busy launch schedule. So I'm going to enlist the help of my Keyfane Miner and my transfer vehicle 
to fly over here and um, and repurpose this so it can fly back to my base, hopefully, um, and serve as the lab there so I can repurpose experiments. So this is my Keythane Vittle, if you remember. It is probe controlled because there's no point carrying a big old human capsule on there or Kerbal capsule on there. But it does need to be uh, moved closer to the Morpheus 5, um, which is my kind of crew spacecraft. And scientific spacecraft, although it's not great for that, because it doesn't really have the Delta V to jump around the surface, so I may be replacing that. Well, not replacing it, this is still going to be my crew vehicle, but I might, um, well, I might, I might just have a permanent vehicle on the surface that does all the science, um, with maybe some nuclear engines or something. Something that just makes it a little easier. Anyway, Sean Kerman is on the job, and almost dying. But yeah, he needs to grab this pipe endpoint, and throw it on the Morpheus 5. Um, which I believe, yeah, this is the Morpheus 5. There have been five Morpheus spacecrafts, all Moon and Minmus spacecrafts. I think the first three were one-man spacecraft, which were just very iterative, very different. And four was kind of a two-stage lander, which took three people to the surface and did various things. And then the five is just a slightly bigger kind of one-stage lander with a little more fuel. Doesn't look quite as cool in my opinion, but I needed a one-stage lander, really. I'm still noticing a little bit of color glitching. I thought, I, I'm, I that's Bandicam, or or the converter I'm using, which converts it into better, um, well, better air quotes, um, video quality, uh, well, better video format for Sony Vegas, I don't know, it's complicated-ish. Um, but anyway, I'm going to need that other pipe endpoint on the Keythane Miner, because, well, I need to transfer fuel into the, um, well, into the, into the lab spacecraft, because it is self-propelled. Um, it did it was never really melt, meant for jumping around the surface, so I'm a little worried that it will fail at that task um, and make a horrible mess. But I can figure it out, maybe do two jumps, although that's difficult because I don't really have any really long-range spacecraft, and in, I had, I'd have to land it in a Keythane field, actually. Um, so this is going to be difficult. I will actually... Um, yeah, this is basically just going to go fly over there, give it some fuel, and hopefully fly back. But again, I'm a little doubtful about the amount of Delta V on this spacecraft, so we'll, um, we'll you know, hope. Um, it's also on the dark side of the moon, so I've only sent one Kerbal so that I don't have to, um, well, so that I don't have to have too much life support. Uh, well, not that I, so that I don't have to have too much life support, it's because I won't have enough life support, because their electric charge will run out quickly, and... Well, it's not really about how much life support I have, it's basically um, a problem that I'm going to run out of electric charge and then I will have three hours to get this uh, Sean back. So if I sent all three crew, that would be risking three crew's life, sending uh, one crew only risk one crew's life. Anyway, you can see that I've done this horribly inefficiently. I way overshot, as I often do, because um, it just makes landing a little easier, which is probably a bad reason to use more Delta V. But yeah, so I come down. And I've already burned more than half my fuel, which is going to be a problem because half my fuel is already, well, more than half my fuel is already gone. So logically, I don't have enough fuel to get back. Um, and then I almost fall over and have to use a bunch more fuel. And I have to transfer most of my fuel into the moon lab, which is going to be a problem. Um, <clears throat> so as I kind of thought I had to do, um, well, well, I kind of thought I was going to have to do, which turned out I did have to do, um, was later I'm going to have to fly the Keythane Miner over so that I can put fuel back in this spacecraft because it will be on the dark side of the moon for too long and in three hours Sean Kerman will be dead. And we don't want that because Sean's a very cool name. Um, anyway, so it's time to transfer the fuel into these tanks anyway because uh, we're going to have our big fuel spacecraft flying over in a bit. Um, and there is a Keythane field near here so I will be able to get the Keythane spacecraft back. Um, but in the future, I am going to want a new spacecraft for jumping around, doing science and things, because it would be a little annoying if I have to send the Keythane Miner after it every time. And because it probably doesn't have enough fuel itself, so it would have to land in Keythane fields constantly, and that's not a great system, if you see where I'm going with this. Anyway, might as well grab a little science while I'm here. Um, and the point of this lab is actually to repurpose these scientific experiments, but I don't know if I'm going to use them. And my flag has fallen over. I don't know how. Didn't know that was a feature of the game. Pretty sure it's a glitch, but a flag I put here probably a few versions ago um, has fallen over. And I think this is, it looks kind of cool because that other spacecraft I keep flicking to is... Um, it was actually a science drop. I, no, a fuel drop because, this, because the spacecraft actually got stuck here before without any fuel, funnily enough. 
Um, I always seem to... I never bring enough fuel, basically, is what I seem to be learning more and more. Anyway, I've got all that science, and now it's time to put it in the capsule and hold him there for three hours. Um, and I'm going to set myself an alarm, because I only have three hours. Sean Cummins will die in three hours, basically. So, the race is on. We need to mine a bunch of fuel, which will take a while. Because I don't have big solar panels on this, because this is an old spacecraft. So I can only operate one drill at a time, and I can only operate one converter at a time. So I'm gonna run out of fuel. Well, I'm gonna run. I might run out of time quite quickly, and it's only been a little time because this mines keythane very fast, um, or relatively fast, and makes liquid fuel fairly fast. Doesn't make oxidizer as fast, um, but yeah, it's already been. I can't really see this terrible post-production window. I think it's only been about twenty minutes, but yeah, after a lot more mining and a lot more making of stuff. I, I, well, I, I basically um, get as much, I fill up my tanks, and I even fill up the keythane tank, which I now realize was stupid, because there's no solar, there's no sun over there, so this will have to wait for a while before it can get back. So it would have been better to leave the keythane out, um, so, that, uh, so that it would have less mass while flying, um, and then it would, um, well, then it would have less, le then it would have more delta V when it landed, because this won't be able to convert all that. And I have already started converting it with the sunlight I do have. And I do another one of these inefficient things, because that's just how I do things. Um, I really should figure out a better way. And I'm pretty sure my flight path's not particularly efficient either. I'm not sure. If you know, actually, is it more efficient to go flat along the surface of a planet, or kind of in a ballistic arc, like a higher arc? I assume it's a better in a larger arc, because... Well, it just makes sense. You have to be going, I guess, with less velocity, but I'm not entirely sure... I imagine there's enough people watching this now for someone to tell me that I'm wrong about doing this. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to hopefully put this down and give as much fuel to the Morpheus spacecraft as possible. I shouldn't have flown that out. Oh no, I did need to fly it out there because I had to put the pipes on. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give as much fuel to the, possibly even all the fuel I put in the science spacecraft, back to the Morpheus flight so he can fly back to safety. Um, and then in the daytime, this Keythane miner, oh no. I'm going to need to leave that fuel in the science spacecraft because, um, well, because because the man has to, well, because uh, I've got to keep this linked up because it I can only link things with, yeah, so basically, um, I'm just going to give Morpheus 5 all the fuel from um, the Keythane miner because that uh, other lab needs to stay fueled because it needs a man to refuel because, um, well, be because it needs pipelines and those can only be connected by Kerbals, so yeah. Um, hopefully there'll be enough fuel after I've given it all of that fuel to um, get home. Um, <laughs> God damn it, Gmail. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm hoping there's enough fuel in here to basically uh, just you know do the give it give the Morpheus Five enough fuel to get back to the base. Um, and failing that, well, actually failing that, just land in sunlight, and then I'll figure all this out in a bit, I guess. Um, or walking distance which, again, is about three hours of, um, well, running distance of the base. Basically somewhere safe. Anyway, I'll hopefully figure all this out in the next episode. But uh, until then, this has been Chaos Pew with Tape. I will see you next time. <laughs>